All right, so it's rolling. And uh, what's your name? And tell us a little about yourself. Hi, I'm Carol Williams. I'm from Charlottesville, Virginia. Okay. Hi, I'm uh, Joan Friedrichs. I'm a local artist from uh, the Seattle area. Uh, my name is Tracy Cunningham. I live in Florida. Hi, I'm Susan. My name is Marianne, and I'm from California. I'm Tracy Walters. I am uh, 65. Oh, almost 66. <laughs> so my name's Sean Lewis. I'm from Olympia, Washington. And the first time I met Jed was right after he moved to Camino Island and he was exhibiting his art at the Bellevue Art Fair. I walked past it and I said, that is how I want to paint. I stumbled across several videos um, with Jed and really admired the way that he painted. I was like, ooh, that looks like something I want to learn how to do. I uh, found this guy who was painting this, what he called radiant light. Quite frankly, you know, when I first saw it, it didn't really impress me too much. I do know things get really ugly sometimes before they get better, so I was gonna give him the benefit of the doubt. Um, he started doing these things which I now know are sky holes. <laughs> and this painting went from dark and drought to just absolutely brilliant, full of light, and I was just really awestruck by it. My wife was searching on the internet for paintings uh, that we might want to purchase. While she was looking for that art, she noticed there was an AU and Acrylic University miniature painting challenge. It was in the middle of COVID. We had a lot of free time at home and we decided to pick up uh, Acrylic University to do that miniature challenge. Um, I really didn't have any art experience. I kind of played around a little bit with fluid art for a little while, and I stumbled across Jed on YouTube and decided to join Acrylic University. Uh, so the last time I picked up a paintbrush was uh, when I was 19 years old in college, and I was not good enough, according to the graduate uh, instructor, to earn credit. So they asked me uh, if I wanted to earn credit that I should uh, opt out of art. I didn't pick up another paintbrush or uh, attempt any art until just a year and a half ago with Acrylic University. Well, I had done a lot of drawing. I have an art degree. I used to draw horses when I was a kid obsessively, so I was really good at horses and then just branched out from there. And so I've been doing art pretty much my whole life, but hadn't done any real, like, a landscape acrylic type of painting. Originally I came from the East Coast, New York, where I went to a four-year art school and got a BFA in arts. Uh, it was off and on. I, I've loved art my entire life. Um, it was really hit or miss. I'd take a few classes, get pretty proficient, and then life happened and I would, for, would go for months, years, and forget everything I knew and then go to pick it up again and struggle. Yeah, so art-wise, before Acrylic University, I uh, was just a observer of art. I had no idea if I could paint or draw uh, because I was very science-oriented as a, as a child. And I have been with Acrylic University for two years and have learned more in the two years than I did at the four-year art school. I mean, I went to an art school and I didn't learn about value and color mixing and all of those amazing things that I'm learning here. So I've learned a lot with how to handle the actual acrylic paints and how to do more of the loose, more um, impressionistic type of acrylic paintings like Jed does. Uh, I do art every week. Every Friday, uh, I pick up a paintbrush and I paint a, a small picture uh, as part of the miniature challenge. And usually once or twice a week, I try something else. Um, and it's all thanks to Acrylic University. So I have been uh, teaching myself for a number of years and um, looking for a good teacher. So I found um, Jed and he's been just like a wonderful mentor and teacher because he cares so much about people. Oh, it has changed tremendously, um, and it's it's growth. It's a day by day step. I do it every single day. Uh, if 
I have a day off just simply because I don't have access to my paints. But it's fun, it's, it's inspiring. I love to share it with my family and... Well, I have um, been very active and the good thing about Acrylic University is that you can be as active as you want to be. Acrylic University for me has been just a really guiding force in having a nice focus and positivity. Uh, so since I joined Acrylic University, I've found that direction and guidance that I was looking for. I'd say that um, it is the most supportive group of people that I have ever encountered. It, it will change your life. I definitely should join. Uh, Acrylic University has changed my life. Uh, it actually, I think, makes the world a better place. Art is important to brain growth. It's important to human growth. And I can't tell you how many times uh, people have come into my art studio. I've only been doing this a while. I don't consider myself an artist. But they look at the wall and they think, wow, that's beautiful art. And I'm lucky enough to be able to hand them a piece of artwork that I've done. And it makes them happy and it makes me happy. If you want to be happy, uh, you should join Acrylic University. Uh, yeah, just do it. Uh, you love it. You're going to make friends. You're going to have fun. Uh, Acrylic University, the setup is wonderful. The, uh, the way that, you know, the, the video that you see, it's, it's like if you're on Jed's shoulder, you know. Uh, it, great quality video. I liked it so much that I got the Lifetime membership. So, so really recommend it. Though, you know, it's, it's very uplifting. Um, it's a very safe place and it's affordable too. I, in, back when I was uh, searching for, you know, a good art teacher, um, I had found one that I studied under for a little while and suddenly her rates were so high I could no longer study under her. When I found this and found what the uh, rate was is to join the Acrylic University, there was like no reason not to. It'll change your life. Happy Wednesday, everybody. It is celebration time for us for the Radiant Acrylic Landscape Masterclass. And I am here with two amazing friends, your Peter Stout and Diana Shine. Thanks for being here, everybody. Hello, everybody. So good to be with you all. Hi, everyone. It really is good to be here. Happy Wednesday. Happy Wednesday. So we got a fun night. We're going to, I'm going to actually do a little demo here and I'll tell you more about that as we get into, we're going to give away several prizes tonight, um, including our grand prize. And Peter, you have a special for everybody, right? I do. I have a, a special video for everyone at the end of this session in about an hour. So be sure to stick around for that. So in, in an hour, we are going to uh, give away the final grand prize right at the end of the night. And then after that, Peter has this special video that he's been working hard on. And mm -hmm. that's going to be the, the kind of like at the very end. So you want to stick around for those big, the big prize and the, the video at the end. And uh, we're going to jump in because we only have an hour and I want to show you my screen here. So let's see if I can figure this out. Uh, okay, here we go. Uh, so here's my canvas, and um, I got a black canvas. I have this reference photo here. You can find it uh, in the chat, um, at the top of the chat right now, and I will put it on the dashboard later. But right now, you can find it at the top of this chat if you are interested in painting along or later want to. But I wanted to say one of the reasons that I'm choosing this tonight is because in the spirit of this giveaway... Um, I'm going to give this painting away. It's not going to be given away to anybody here in the chat. It's going to be given away to somebody else, but I'll tell you a little bit more about that as we go. But um, we're going to talk, I'll talk a little bit about the painting process, but we're also just going to chat and talk about the week. So Peter and Diana, 
We had a pretty fun week, didn't we? Oh, we yeah. did. It was great. <laughs> oh, and so, so uplifting too. Fun, really uplifting and, and inspiring to see everyone's artwork. That's what I thought too. I was blown away by the participation and the enthusiasm and and uh, the courage that I saw throughout the week. Yeah. It does take a lot of courage when you're a new painter to post your work and um, and just to, you know, it, it would worry about what other people might think or say, but everyone was so supportive of people from every um, part of their art journey. And so it was it was lovely to see. So good. So fun. And yeah. um, I want to show you guys one other thing. Oh, sorry about that. <laughs> um, <laughs> so here are two paintings, the two demos that I did. Now, I want to take a little vote. Here's the, the, the session three one. Here's the, the session one one. Peter, oh. do you think you can keep track of this? I'm gonna give uh, away one of these. I'm gonna give away one of these tonight. This is that, number one, and this is number three. Which one should I give away? <laughs> oh man. One mm. or three. One or three. Okay. That's for you guys to decide. And we'll just kind of try to do a little. It's I'm putting almost Peter on the spot. unanimously. I'm sorry about that. No, no, you're good, but it's almost <laughs> unanimously three. So <laughs> I was kind of figuring it was going to be. Yeah, three. me too. Uh, <laughs> I, I, I mean, just, Instagram I just already thought I'd, that, I'd so. ask just to make sure that it was, you know, not just my, uh, you know, you know, if, if it if it went the other direction, I would have, you know, given that one away. So right, right, right. right. <laughs> okay, well, that will be that will be a giveaway later than tonight. So. I'll just talk real briefly here. So what I'm doing here is I'm just gonna um, I'm just kind of drawing in the the scene. We've got a really cool uh, backlit or not backlit, but late evening kind of sun hitting the tops of these trees. And um, so what's really cool? Do you guys can I share a little story about this this house and this this scene? Yeah, go for it. Okay. So I, I painted a, a, a scene of this before, a different format. Um, it was a square painting, and, um, but I, I was driving past here. I, I can't remember exactly the, the context of when, when it was. It was late in the day. I, there's a beach over close to this house and a park, and I might have been at the beach. I don't remember for sure. But I know I was driving past, and I you know, looked back, and I was like, oh, my goodness, look at all that. Look at that, those trees and, and all that's going on over there. And I, I, I took a quick picture and anyways, I don't know, probably a year or two later, we are having a um, conversation at, um, <laughs> I'm trying to think of how this happened. Um, oh yeah, I, I remember now, our daughter, does gymnastics and she was at gymnastics practice and I, and, and she met a friend, uh, someone who became a friend and this girl and Willow, we, we carpool with their parents. And one thing that I realized through it was that this house is where her, our daughter's friend lives. So anyway, all that to say that I am doing this painting for their family. I'm going to give this to them. Oh, um, cool. Yeah. Because they they always, they like that painting, but it was already sold. I, I remember going to a practice one night and and realizing, oh, this is, uh you know, the dad. And I, I, sh I think I showed him. I was like, you never guess this, but I, I painted your house one time. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, oh, so anyways, he showed um, his wife and and she was really like, she was like, oh, you know, do you still have that painting? And I said, no, I don't have that painting. So here we go. I'm painting it 
tonight. Awesome. Anyways, yeah, kind of fun though. So for sure. Diana. Oh, go ahead, Peter. Oh, I was just gonna say, Diana, what are you teaching on this Friday? Oh, I'm gonna be teaching a workshop, a two-hour workshop on the golden hour. And I'm really excited because, uh, you know, artists and photographers always talk about the golden hour. And I'm really going to dig in what it is, when it is, how you paint it, what colors you paint it. Uh, it'll be really fun. I have a lot of photos of some of my favorite artists who've painted the golden hour. And I'll show those to you, too, to inspire you to, to do your own uh golden hour painting <laughs> so i'm i'm excited peter i think it's gonna be fun nice me too i'm excited for that so if you guys join uh if you're not a member and you join you'll get to be there uh two days from now is that golden hour workshop and diana's workshops are always incredible guys i mean you you were there this week though, so you, you understand <laughs> thanks yeah. peter yeah it, totally incredible and you know we get the question a lot of times why why don't you guys just um leave your you know like do this all the time for everybody and you know that kind of thing and and one of the reasons we offer master classes is because we we want to be able to offer this to anybody who wants to come and show up and but at a certain point we know that the people who are part of acrylic university who are our members they are our priority and we want to do the be very best job that we can in serving them. And that means that we have to eventually shut down the master class and, and say, hey, guys, thank you so much for participating. We're going to turn our attention to the membership again now. And that's kind of like where we're, we're getting to that place now where this is our final celebration and everything. And we've had such a good time. But we're going to have to, you know, shut down the master class turn off you know the um you know just like move everything into the the membership and everything like that but it's really not because we don't want to um you know do stuff for everybody it's really because we want to give our very best effort to the to the people who are members and um and so we all enjoy doing this and um but we're really excited for the people who have become members there have been so many people who've signed up in the last few days as we've had our membership open and so really we're thankful for that and we're also excited to be able to turn our attention to you guys and welcome you into our family and um yeah just continue moving forward and having a good time and seeing your growth as you're great. sitting under the people like diana on friday it's gonna be so awesome um you can find all the information about the membership uh at the website acrylicuniversity.com um are the au classes more advanced i mean they range from really like beginner first touching acrylics all the way to much more advanced so everything in between yeah i try to make in my workshops i try to create a way for everybody to have something they can learn from the mm -hmm. very like only touched paints for a day to <laughs> being showing in galleries and just want a few extra bits of information to fill in what you already know. So I really try hard to think about that as I design my classes so everybody has something they can learn. Which you do an amazing job of Thank that. You. I, I think that uh, everybody who's taken a workshop with you knows. Now, Diana and I were just having an interesting conversation a little bit ago. Speaking of workshops, we were talking about the possibility, and, and I shouldn't say too much, mm -hmm. and we don't need to say what it is or anything like that right now. But Diana and I, um, I'm going to take a workshop this summer, and we were just saying like, oh, Diana, what do you, or this, this spring, would you be interested in doing this with me? So when it would be so fun. I just think the idea of it is so fun. But then we thought the main problem would be that we'd probably cause too much problem for the teacher. <laughs> we would be in trouble. <laughs> mm. <laughs> we'd think it was fun. They'd want us gone out of the class. <laughs> <laughs> 
No, I think we could contain ourselves, but it would be, it, wouldn't that be just a blast? I can't yeah, think of would. much that I, I'd rather do than take a class with you and be able to be on that end of it for a week, just straight, just let's straight, learn. Straight painting, learning this time, yeah. just really, you know, that's the, the hallmark of it just, you never stop learning ever. No matter how long you've been painting, no matter what you've been doing, you just never stop learning. Mm -hmm. And I love that. It keeps you fresh and it keeps you alive. Um, yeah. Yeah. Art is I, a, it's constant like that. It's constant. And it was, it was sort of lonely at first starting in acrylics. There was nobody to teach, uh, to teach me. Yeah. And, um, it would be just really great. And I have, you know, I read books and I went online and, but acrylic university really is filling that niche, but it'd be great to just go a direction and take, and just let someone else teach me new stuff, you know, it'd be fabulous. Yeah, totally. <laughs> totally. It's, it's like sometimes what I, what I like to try to do when I take a workshop is I try to, I try to intentionally not forget everything that I know, but, but basically act like I don't know anything because I think that what happens is I get stuck in my ways. And if I, mm -hmm. if I don't intentionally try to learn, then I'll just keep doing things the same way. And that's not bad necessarily, but the whole point of taking a workshop for me is to try something new, you know, like, mm -hmm this person does it different than me. How am I going to learn? And, um, and so if I, if I go in with that attitude, like I'm going to try whatever they say, whether or not it feels comfortable to me or not, I'm going to do it. And, uh, I, I feel like that's my, the times that I've learned the most are because, because of that type of, um, mindset of just, just saying whatever it is, I'm going to do it their way. And, mm -hmm. and at the end of it, I can decide whether I liked it or not, but I'm going to just try. Yeah. Yeah. And you know, that's the cool thing is you don't have to accept what they've said. <laughs> you can still yeah. do it your own way, but nothing ever changes. If you don't push the, that envelope, mm -hmm. you'll never get better if you don't, just push out of your comfort zone, do something a little bit different, try someone else's point of view, look at it from their, from their angle. And, you know, you'll never get better unless you push and stretch and get a little bit uncomfortable. Yeah. And I, 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 I admire that because we have that wide range of people right inside of acrylic mm -hmm. university. I feel like we have a range of people from total new painters who are it's really wonderful honestly like it's it's actually really wonderful to be at that stage of a new painter and be in a place like acrylic university because yeah. if you sit under diana and you are formed by her you know knowledge and wisdom and stuff you're gonna save yourself so much time and energy and effort um, like we, we, she was saying just a minute ago, you don't have to figure it out yourself, but also I really appreciate the people who come in with years and years and years of experience. Mm -hmm. They've been painting for a really long yeah. time and they, but they have that eager, I love learning and I want to grow and they, they sit and they, they really absorb this stuff that is being presented and they, they, you, you see the growth. It's, it's just I think it's more just the mindset of what it looks like to be um, a learner, you know, a lifelong learner. And um, yeah, it's, it's an admirable thing. I love it. Um, oh, shoot. What was I going to say? Oh yeah. Speaking of um, embracing the challenge or whatever, you guys all like nailed it this week in regards to that i mean i know this was super challenging for a lot of you it's not it is called a master class and challenge right um and i know it was super challenging but so many of you pushed through it anyway and were like that was so helpful i'm so glad i did and 
that's exactly what we're going for here. Like if you feel stretched and you feel like you grew, then we did our job. So uh, super proud uh, of all of you who persevered perfect. through the, the, the challenge. Yeah. Yeah, that's mm-hmm. a perfect that's perfect. You're you're exactly right, Peter, because it's it's really apparent in a challenge like this too, right? Is like that same mindset of I'm gonna learn, I'm gonna grow, even when it's hard. That's exactly what we're talking about. When we're going to a workshop, we want to have that same mindset. <laughs> mm-hmm. Right. And you know, it's when you teach a lot, you definitely have to step outside of the teaching mindset because that would be really irritating to a teacher to have someone coming in with a teaching mindset <laughs> instead of a learning mindset. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like, oh my goodness, that would be terrible. So yeah, Jen, <laughs> totally just go in with just being completely open and um, completely porous, ready to just absorb what this, what this other person has to say. And You know, I feel that way a lot with the students I've taught in person is that we all have something to teach each other. It's not just someone's an expert and someone isn't. Everybody has something that they excel in. Everybody has something that they're passionate about and that they can, you know, share with us. It's fabulous. Yeah, that's that's totally the case. We're all we're all learning. um, And. um, I've gained so many things. I mean, I always think it's interesting how a lot of the times people ask the questions like, like I remember answering this just the other day in a Q&A was people, somebody asked, will we be able to have Q&As with you, you know, um, if we, if we join, you know, will we still be able to ask questions and things like that? And, and one of the things, I don't know, I think we said was, well, yes, there are these opportunities. But then we quickly also said, but the people who are part of Acrylic University, you you will, you don't really need to have that many Q&As with us because all you really need to do is ask in the community. And there's we we learn stuff all the time. Like even, even during a Q&A, I'll see other people speak up and have an answer. And I'll think, oh, that's such a good answer for this question. You mm-hmm. know, and I and it wasn't the first thing that I was thinking of. It was I'm, even if I knew it, I sometimes I don't know it, but sometimes I know, but I forget, you know, and, and somebody else says, oh, I go, oh, yeah, that's the answer that I was really trying to think of right there. That's that's the way to do that. So, yeah, we learn all the time from our from the people that are with us and help us grow, help us get better. Oh, Jed, those are gorgeous greens. Wow. Yeah, that's fun, they're isn't it? Beautiful. Yeah. They're just they stand out on that black so well and they, they glow. It's beautiful. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm trying to keep the I, I I need to come up with the values overall in this, but I want to um want to keep this the grass kind of light but cool, you know, so the stalo blue is creating a really nice um a really nice color. I hope I didn't cut out. Did I cut out? No, I don't think so. Here. Okay, good, good, good. The lights actually flickered, so that really scared me. But maybe it was just somebody's. <laughs> so, we were on here the other morning, right before a, one of our sessions, and my power went out for some reason, and I was like, "Oh my goodness, worst, yeah. worst timing." Yeah, yeah. Well, you're and it went out earlier in the week too, right, or something like that. Well, yeah, that's what I was referring to earlier, not today, but earlier, earlier this week. Oh, yeah. There there have been a couple times recently. Yeah. (laughs) I know. (laughs) Nothing like it. Not cool. (laughs) Yeah. Okay, Peter, it's time. Let's. Yeah. Let me. uh, Let me. Uh. What am I going to do? Okay, so. The first thing that we're going to do is we're going to give away some some uh, paint brushes. So we've got another set of of paint brushes here, and I'm going to pull up this like this. And so, if you uh, who would like a set of paint brushes, these incredible, amazing. <laughs> 
Princeton Catalyst brushes, <laughs> my favorite ever. If you want one, I want you to shout it out right now. A set of paint brushes are coming to somebody right now, and I'm going to spin this wheel, and let's see who it is. Paint brushes are calling your name. You know what we could do? Just realizing. Okay. Karen, all right. Oh, wow, well, Karen. Okay. <laughs> Karen, um, we will put the support at Acrylic University email address on the screen, and you can email us, and we will get these over to you. Thank you so much. Okay. We're going to go back here. And um, I'm thinking, Peter, what do you think about doing this? Yeah. There we go. Now we can see there everybody. We go. For sure. <laughs> I have to show you. My grandson snuck in here and uh, stuck a stick pot on my mic stand. <laughs> and I was talking away, and all of a sudden, I saw this little stick pot on here. <laughs> He stuck I a what? That. It's a, well, it's a, it's called a stick bot. It's a little. Oh, robot. a stick bot. Okay. Gotcha. Gotcha. <laughs> oh, there's yeah. the I love that. <laughs> Aaron. <laughs> all right. Thanks. <laughs> Let's watch Jed paint. Okay. <laughs> I love that. Thank you, Oliver, for that stick bot. It's, it's cool to <laughs> cool to see. <laughs> yeah, isn't it beautiful? Yeah, those, those greens just glow. Mm -hmm. Always, uh, always feel like it takes a few layers of the paint to get the the values up. So getting things in place and then we'll start trying to bring up the the value a bit shelly proctor says i was not happy with my results but i learned so much that is a great attitude to have or not a waste of time yeah great attitude not to have shelly not a waste of time i i can't tell you how many times i have really just failed I will say that when I moved after what 35 years of painting, I moved, mm -hmm. I took 900 pounds of bad art to the dump. <laughs> oh, 900? 100 pounds. They weighed the truck. <laughs> oh, my God. And, wow. uh, you know, old sketchbooks and horrible paintings and terrible <laughs> stuff and things that couldn't be wow. painted over. And um, I still filled up my new garage with the stuff I kept. But <laughs> yeah, but, wow. You know, we learned from every failure. You know? Yeah. If you want to be yeah, a master right? like Diana, you got to make 900 pounds of bad art. All right. <laughs> right. It's, it's, it's weighed in the ton now. <laughs> yep. That's like yeah. thousands of hours of work. Yeah, it is. <laughs> but well, it's that's just crazy. That, Every failure you learn, I mean, remember, I don't know if you ever watch little kids learn to walk, but they learned better when they fell and hurt themselves than, you know, just they get mm -hmm. up, toddle around, they don't fall. The minute you hurt yourself, uh, you learn a whole lot of new lessons. And that's what failing at a painting feels like. You just, yep. you learn, you just learn and you don't want to repeat that. So you learn better. <laughs> uh -huh. That's so true. That is so true. And I think Vincent Van Gogh, I, th I think, or no, it might've been Monet. He said something like people, people say I'm a genius or something. And he says huh. something like, uh, all I see is painting and spoiling many canvases, something <laughs> to that, you know, just, yeah, yeah. but like you, there's hours and hours and hours and many, many, many canvases and many things that have gone off the rails and are not, <laughs> not worth showing behind every successful painting. You know? mm -hmm. And that's mm -hmm. the case for success in life, period. Like any successful, you know, quote successful yeah. person. It, it's just a lot of repetition, guys, honestly. 
Yeah, lots of repetition. And then, and there's also something about like you're doing great, you're doing great, you're doing great. And all of a sudden you come in and you start to slip up and you can feel yourself slipping. And uh-huh. all of a sudden you're just sliding down this greased slope and the painting is horrible and you lose your self confidence. And the next three paintings are like, I don't know if I can do this, but you get it back. It'll come back. <laughs> uh-huh. Oh, yeah, totally. You know, I see totally. that happen with athletes. They're just not on their game one day and then they have to like get out of their head and get back in the game. And yeah. they know, you know, you got to know you c- you've got this stuff. You you can do this. Uh-huh. <laughs> and uh, it takes a lot. <laughs> it does. It does. And I think that that's part of why I also love uh, something like the master class and uh-huh. The masterclass to me is like a jump start. You know, how many people come into the masterclass who are interested in art? They've they've always wanted to do something, but they haven't. For whatever reason, they haven't done art, you know, like mm-hmm. they've wanted to. And and so the masterclass can be that that kickstart for them. And they 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 actually paint maybe for the first time in a really, really long time or something like that, right? I mean, I know we've got a wide range of people, but this is for some, some people are like this, right? They haven't painted. And I think that the the thing that I love also about Acrylic University is that it's like the kickstart that keeps going. You know, it's the jumpstart mm-hmm. that, that can change your environment because I used, to, I, I heard this a while ago, but, and it stuck with me. The guy was talking about something else, but he said, I don't believe in motivation. He said, I believe mm. motivation comes and goes, but what I, what I believe in is environment. You have to change your environment. Mm-hmm. And if you, you know how that is, like you can not be motivated, but if you go to the gym and you see people working out and, you know, or if you have, uh-huh. um, you know, you have a painting group and you show up at the painting group, you might not feel like being there, but all of a sudden you're surrounded by it and you feel a lot more like it than you did. And you do something. Oh yeah, totally. You get in the mood. Right. And I uh-huh. think that, yeah, that's the goal of the community of acrylic university is to provide you with that kind of ongoing motivation through the environment of mm-hmm. other people. <laughs> oh, totally. Hey, Diana, I have a question for you. Yeah. yeah. So, I read this book a while ago called The Inner Game of Tennis. Mm-hmm. And it talks about basically getting better at shutting off your like the analytical side of your brain, the left side yep. of your brain, and kind of letting your like mm-hmm. instincts tank over basically. Um, yes. Kind of entering the flow state that people talk about all the time, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, so I was just wondering for you, your instruction is so thorough and analytical like when you're painting personally do you have an internal monologue about like okay i need to do this this way or like how much of it is you get lost in it does that make sense yes no um i do a lot of preparation i do a lot of thinking in the beginning Mm. and then when i get to my own and and when i'm doing my demos i talk through the demo it's not like my own painting my in my own painting there comes a point where um, the preparation helped me gain the confidence. I know this is going to be a beautiful painting because I got a great design, great color. Mm. But when I'm painting, I go faster than my mind can think. I mm. paint, I try to paint just in front of my critic, in front of uh, what I'm thinking about. And so I am thinking, but uh-huh. I'm what I do what I call art think, which is each brushstroke, should it be warmer, cooler, darker, lighter, brighter, duller, thicker, thinner? Those uh-huh. are the words that are in my head. Not uh-huh. a constant monologue of this is terrible or right. I planned to make this tree yellow, so I better make it yellow. And the rules say you got to put a shadow here, so I better put a shadow here. Uh-huh. I do not think that. I think uh-huh. this brushstroke needs to be bright uh-huh. because the painting is saying that brushstroke needs to be bright. Uh-huh. And so that's where the planning and the and 
analysis comes, I mean, those athletes I was talking about, those high level athletes, uh -huh. when they're out there playing, they're playing on instinct, but right. they review, they review their tapes and they learn and they, mm. you know, it's in their head, they learn it mm -hmm. and then they have to forget it on game day. So <laughs> <laughs> yeah. that's, that's where I am when I, when I paint for myself is I'm trying to stay ahead of that critical voice and uh -huh. ahead of the role voice that says, Ooh, you're breaking these rules. That's terrible. So, right. <laughs> yeah, but thank you for asking because that, that whole flow thing is such a wonderful thing to study. Mm -hmm. And my husband and I have studied it a lot. I have a little bit about it in the, uh, um, I have a little blog on my website uh, and there's a thing about getting into that state of flow uh, uh -huh. and staying there. Um, I know my very first really great paintings, the couple that I just went, Oh, they were like, how did that happen? They just seemed to come from nowhere. Uh -huh. And then I tried to replicate that for years and couldn't figure it out. And I, then all of a sudden I realized, Oh, it came from getting out of your own way. It mm. came from just, getting outside of that critic and getting into just focusing in on the painting. What do you need, my darling painting? <laughs> what yeah. do you need? <laughs> totally. I love totally. you so much. What do you need? What can I give you? <laughs> wow. That is such a great answer. I, and I think that that's, oh, go ahead, Peter. No, you, you first, you first. Well, no, I guess I, I think that, one, I, I've I've talked about that myself um, because I'm going to put it in completely different language, but uh -huh. see if this kind of is the same. Because for a while, I used to talk a lot about the idea of being the boss of your painting. And what uh -huh. I meant by that was you can't just let the – you have to be the boss. You have to take charge of your painting. You have to decide, do I want this – seem to have this tree in it or should i take it out you know like what uh -huh. colors am i going to use what am i going to use design you have to think through the design you don't just right. want to look at something and do exactly what it says because then you're not the boss of it anymore you're you're just the employee and the boss is the reference photo and it's telling you what to do and then you feel like you you're in a slave to it and so that idea of like hey you're the boss you have to do that but then uh -huh. And so you have to have a plan. You have to know, you have to, you know, like have an idea of where you're going, a vision for the future, right? Like a, right. a good boss would do that. But then also I, I, the way I would think about it when you're, when you're painting and you think about a relationship with a boss, a good boss is going to listen to what's going on. Right. Mm. And, and be able to make changes and things like that. And, mm -hmm. and so I think that that's kind of what you're talking about too, is you have to have the plan. You have to have, the idea of what's going on and what, how you're going to get there and all that kind of stuff. And then huh. you want to also, they'll go, wait, the painting is telling me something right now. Like mm. what, you know, my plan is good. I like the general direction, but there's individual brushstrokes that you're listening, you're observing, and you're, you're making decisions based on what is happening at that current moment in the painting. Right. I, that's super interesting. I love hearing both of your guys' perspectives on that. It's uh, super interesting. Um, yeah, I think the 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 science of how our brains work like that, and like the science of flow or like peak performance, if that makes sense, is so interesting to like dig into. It's really interesting, and you know, really, when you look back at what your absolute best thing you ever did was and you kind of say well where was my frame of mind what was i thinking about where was my head at uh -huh. and in that moment you'll you'll be able to go you know i was just so focused and i you know one of the things uh -huh. i call flow is relaxed focused attention uh -huh. giving the painting 100 percent of the attention not you know, not thinking about, you know, the phone call you have to make or the menu or the chores you mm. have to do, but focused only this and only this uh -huh. in a relaxed, in a, an absolutely relaxed way. Like it's not getting you stressed out because it's just paint. It's, <laughs> it's not the end mm. of the world. It is really just paint. Right. And, and in acrylic paint, it's just paint can be just covered over with another just paint. 
Uh-huh. But, I love that. <laughs> that's right. so good. But that relaxed, focused attention really, you can breathe, you have space to do your work. Um, but when your mind starts going off onto every other tangent, all you're mm-hmm. doing is you're you're repeating, your hand is just repeating some brush marks. I see people go, you know, talking in my on in present classes and they're talking and their hand is literally going over the same spot over and uh-huh. over and over uh-huh. because they're not focused. They're not paying attention to their painting. Right. And um, yeah, you're right, Leslie. It is called getting in the zone. It's and staying in the zone, teaching yourself to how to keep yourself in the zone longer and longer and longer periods. It's so easy to slip out. It is. Um, you know, <laughs> And maybe also with that is knowing your knowing kind of like what are there limits to what you can do in the zone? You know, so for mm-hmm. instance, mm-hmm. one artist told me that he thought you could paint for 40. He could paint and he kind of made a general statement, but 45 minutes in the zone, 45 mm-hmm. minutes was kind of the limit for for him, at least in terms of being able to fully concentrate, fully be in it without taking some sort of mental break. Right. right. And, and maybe that's part of it is like realizing, okay, I'm not going to be able to do this for five hours right now. Mm-hmm. I need to do this mm-hmm. in increments. Maybe I can paint for five hours in a row, mm-hmm. but I need to take five minute breaks every hour or every 45 uh-huh. minutes or however long. Cause it is, it's a, it's a mental, it's physical, it's mental, you know, yes. um, and you kind of need to be, you, you can't be doing it at when you're not, <laughs> you know, you can't expect the best uh, performance if you're not at your peak, you know, uh-huh. physically right. and all that way. Totally. I have a little trick I did when I had teenagers uh, because they can, you know, they can take your attention as much as toddlers. <laughs> yeah. But I, I would set a timer to go off about 10 minutes before I needed to stop my painting. And they were they were under strict instructions unless it's on fire or bleeding. They weren't <laughs> they weren't to <laughs> bother me while I was painting. That's um, funny. But my timer would go off. I would know. Okay, it's time for me to put down the last marks that I'm thinking about. Put my paints mm-hmm. away. Wrap this up because I have to go pick up somebody and get them to the dentist. You know, <laughs> it's just mm-hmm. like yeah. my mom. Then my mom had could come back on, but for the time. As long as that timer was on, I didn't have to think about anything but painting. And I knew I would only get a phone call if there was, you know, blood yeah. or something. Right. <laughs> For sure. It's and that that takes a lot of discipline too. That's Bye. there's so many layers to it. See you, Oliver. <laughs> Bye, Oliver. This is my grandson Oliver. He's the love of my life here. <laughs> All so right. Bye-bye. Bye. <laughs> uh, right. Um, someone asks what color blue you're using, Jed. This is ultramarine blue. Sorry, I I, have, I only have Thalo blue written on the on my screen, but yes, this is ultramarine here. And it doesn't just make the other colors seem to glow. Like it makes your oranges really glow. It's beautiful. I'll pay you later, Diane. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. The invoice is in the mail. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> well, I'm finally at the place where I feel like, okay, now pretty much everything's covered and, and I can start evaluating things a little bit better. But I love I love this. This is one of the many types of scene that I love to paint, but I do love the late light. Absolutely. Uh, we got another prize here in one minute, Jed. Okay, 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 cool, cool. Perfect. So this prize is going to be this painting that you all voted for. Uh, (laughs) Uh, 
<laughs> oh, I want you all to win that painting. Jed, can you make about 5,000 more? <laughs> oh, man. That's so funny. Yeah, now this, this is what we'll give away, guys, this next one. Wow. So I will... Wow. I will um, pull this up here. Or when this one is this. lucky. That's incredible. Let's do this. Okay, here we go. Let's see who wins. Lucky, lucky person. How amazing. Oh, man. It's funny giving away your own painting, actually. It's kind of like... <laughs> Okay, Mosa, Mosa, congratulations. You are the winner of this painting. So and uh, I'll show you one more time. And then Peter will flash up the email that you can yes, go sir. to. And um, just let us know your address, everything like that. We'll get this shipped out to you. Okay, and guys, next up on the list at, in 20 minutes, we are going to give away the... Big grand prize, which is a five hundred dollar gift card to basically anywhere you want. I mean, beside you can get anything you want, you know. And it's then, Amazon. yeah. And we got the video afterwards. And then we got the video, which is kind of like the the oh. grand prize of grand prizes for everybody. Everybody uh, gets go. to win the video. Yeah, well, Peter's so masterful at it, you know. Thank you. <laughs> you just do Peter such always... an amazing job at videos. Uh, it's uh, he does. I've he does such a good job. job. He does. And, I've been trying to assemble it. It's hard. It's hard work. It's hard. <laughs> I think too that Peter, like this is this is the way it works in in my family. Kind of growing up, um, mm -hmm. was my mom is a crier. So we always knew if we, if we did a good job with a, a card for, you know, my mom on her birthday or mother's day or something, she would cry. And so that's kind of the standard. And I think that Peter <laughs> is always going for that with me. Uh, I, it and usually everybody in general. To my eyes when I watch these videos and I'm like, Oh man, yeah. this is so good, Peter. So and even thank you. Thank you. And even though I don't do lots of painting, like I'm still, I'm getting more into it and I'm doing a lot of drawing and I do, I want to eventually, but everything that we talk about here at acrylic university is still super meaningful to me because it's so applicable still to the art forms that I do like video and stuff like that. Um, oh, yeah. like on, yeah. on Tuesday, we asked you what you guys want people to feel when they look at your paintings. Right. And I have the same sort of thing, except what I want people to feel when I show them the films that I made or whatever, you know? Yeah, totally. that's applicable across all artistic mediums, and it's super beautiful. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah. So, that's, yeah, that's that's good, man. I I love seeing um, Peter because it's it's pretty interesting. Just like looking back and thinking, okay, well, where was Peter at when we started this? You know, uh, you know, like in terms of art. I mean, I don't know. Had you even like really been? I mean. I guess had you been doing drawing stuff before that, or I, I don't really know. Like, I've been doing drawing like off and on since I was like thirteen or something, or no, okay. even younger, like like eight. Because my dad uh, used to do a lot of drawing, and so that's okay. like one thing we would do a lot together. Is like, hey, dad, let's draw together. So we'd like sit down. Oh, cool. Across the table, yeah. Oh, that's um, so cool. Yeah. Yeah. So I've been doing it like off and on for years. It's hard for me to find the motivation to like sit down and enjoy drawing, if that makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but it's getting better. So. Well, it's just interesting. Like you, you probably know so much more about art at this point, you know, after uh -huh. I've been involved, you know, here for so long and totally um, it's, yeah, it's, it's cool to think though. And it's cool that it it does like so much of this stuff, you know, applies across the board. Like you're saying, it's it's mm -hmm. to to lots of forms of art, you know. The absolutely, creativity it's like creativity. an extra level of meaning to it. Yeah, yeah. I realized that I I had changed this this tree. It wasn't supposed to be a background tree. <laughs> I had kind of like taken the form of it and then forgotten where it was 
needs to move back into the foreground a little bit more. Peter isn't only an artist, but he's a newlywed too. I am. I am. <laughs> True. Very happily. Yeah. Yeah. I'm. I'm just. Uh, at this point in your painting, Jed, I'm just amazed. It's just everything starts to come to life, and I'm sitting here with my mouth. I'm just singing oh. open. I'm like, yeah. You're oh, so nice, wow. Diana. Yeah. <laughs> uh, a more kind person is hard to find than Diana Shine. She's, it's she's true. a real, <laughs> Very she's true. a real wonder. Oh. One of the, one of the <laughs> wonders of the world. <laughs> oh, gosh. <laughs> 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 yeah, that's funny. There. Oh, that light. Yeah. Yeah, it's beautiful, Jed. Magical is that your lights turn on. It's like you just throughout the painting, you're like in the shadows, and then all of a sudden the lights come on, and it's uh -huh. like this. <laughs> Totally. And I feel like you captured the, oh, sorry, Diana. I didn't mean to cut you off. Oh no, it's okay. Um, you capture the cool evening light, like really well. Mm -hmm. Thank you, my friend. Appreciate it. We've got a little bit longer. We'll see if we can amp it up even a little bit more. That's what I always think is interesting with painting on black is just that it, I always think, oh, it's pretty bright. It's pretty bright. And then I get out another layer and realized that that color had gotten pretty dark after it dried or you know with the black mm -hmm. kind of coming through <laughs> so we'll see oh kathy's asking if we ever make suggestions to each other to make changes no we don't we just we're like each other's biggest fans <laughs> yeah i can't I mean, we, we, I, I know I would totally be open to any, um, any suggestion that Diane has. And, you know, a lot of times, like one thing I would say is when you're paint, like if you're in the middle of a painting, it's, it's kind of, uh, I don't know. I don't know if there's such a thing as painter's etiquette or, or not, but, uh -huh. but oh, they're dead. Just yeah. know, knowing, what it's like to be in the middle of a painting and knowing that when somebody else is working on a painting, it's not, it's not done. It's like, it's like coming up to somebody's house that's halfway finished and saying, Oh, you should put stairs in here. Like, you know, <laughs> you should, you really should finish the siding. You know, you really should finish out the drywall because it's, it'd be a lot nicer if you had a carpet in here instead of the plywood. Right. Mm -hmm. I mean, that that's a lot of what it's like. <laughs> And so I think if if we were to 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 talk to each other about that kind of thing, it would be like during a live thing like this, like no. you know, because that's kind of like you know we 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 realize that we're you know working on it, and it's it's complicated. Like yeah, you know, even like Diana was saying earlier, I was thinking this is why I should shut up be, so I can concentrate mm -hmm. on this painting <laughs> because yeah. it takes a hundred percent of your attention and. Uh, if you're talking too much like I do, uh, yeah. I, also <laughs> I, can oh, and I get I get so funny when I'm talking while I'm painting because sometimes I just start talking nonsense about three quarters of the way through. <laughs> <laughs> I'm focusing on the painting and whatever is coming out of my mouth does isn't making any sense at all. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um. But yeah, it's while you're in process, I would hope that Jed would say, if there was some really ghastly thing in a painting that I didn't see, he would um, say, well, you know, <laughs> <laughs> that yeah. thing oh, right yeah. there. I would really hope he'd say that to me. That right. would be really great. And likewise. <laughs> well, I think also it's just polite not to critique somebody's art unless they ask for it, you know? Like if mm -hmm. somebody shows you something like, hey, I did this, you know, and you're like, oh, you should do this instead. <laughs> it's like really deflating. <laughs> 
you know <laughs> yeah, yeah yeah it's a little different if they're like hey what do you think can you give me some advice you know that's a really healthy context is when you if you have people that you can ask for advice from and and mm -hmm. get feedback um yeah it's, it's a really wonderful gift really because um finding somebody that's a good artist and kind enough to or or not even an artist necessarily but i i just i think they have to have some sense of design or you know some sense of you know what what could help you or, or, mm. or be able to spot something but if if you have that kind of person it's so nice because um we we just sometimes lack that perspective on our own work and mm -hmm. sometimes i often think it's the kind of thing too that for me a lot of times it's it's somebody says no you shouldn't throw that away <laughs> because mm -hmm. That that painting has more potential than you're able to see right now, and um, mm -hmm. sometimes it's the other way. Like my Renee will often, you know, give me good advice. I'll think a painting. I'll be like, oh, it's good enough. You know, I sh I'm done. I don't want to work mm -hmm. on that anymore. And she'll come and say, well, what about this part? And I'll <laughs> I don't really want to work on it. But then I do, and it it actually was a pretty important part that I was gonna just kind of gloss over. Um, right. Even though a lot of times it's something that I was already thinking about a little bit, and but in the back of my mind, I I didn't really want to work on it, or I didn't know if it was that big of a deal. So, question, um, oh, yeah. or or not question? Sorry, why did I say that? Uh, Kathy said yes. My hubby does that at the ugly stage. So hard not to react. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah. Mm. yeah, that that is hard. Yeah, yeah, I used to uh, paint in watercolor years ago in the eighties. That's you know, I'm that when I was a baby, right? <laughs> no, and there was a stage because you saved your darks for last, and you know, yeah. and then uh -huh. it, I, could, I I threw away so many paintings before I realized that that's just what they look like at that stage. You can't, you know, you, yeah. you uh, can't make mm -hmm. it any other way. I called it the soup stage, where everything just looked like soup. Nothing mm. was coming together. Nothing looked right. There's no values. There's no nothing. It's just paint just looping all over the place. And now it's more like the stew stage. <laughs> <laughs> hey. But there's with still, an, yeah, with acrylics, it, it, there's still an ugly stage where you just have yeah. to fight through it. And every mm -hmm. single, if you don't have an ugly stage, you're probably not. Um, pushing this painting to its full potential you know you just mm -hmm. you gotta do it and if somebody hits you in the nose right when you're at the ugly stage you're not gonna want to finish <laughs> i know exactly uh That's patricia true. says don't quit your day job not good to say <laughs> <laughs> yeah um or someone will say d miller says or someone will say you can fix that by doing this when you really thought it was great um, yeah, right. We could make a master list of <laughs> phrases to never say to an artist. Uh, there we go. <laughs> what's your backup plan? Would be another yeah. one. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> yeah. Well, I think I feel like earlier in the masterclass too, I, I saw somebody who was having a hard time. They had shown their painting to somebody, a friend, and the friend just had like started laughing immediately or something. Mm. And, um, it was, it was, it was, it, it hurts because it's kind of like, you know, they, they, you know, just trying to understand why, why, why did you laugh like that? You know, like, um, right. you know, and, and I guess that there's, there's probably is a, a real lesson to, to be learned for all of us in, in that, you know, how many stories have we heard? I mean, I've heard so many stories of people who have had a, an experience with somebody who mattered to them, who, who did something like that, where they, they, um, they basically discouraged somebody and then they dropped painting. They stopped, you know, because mm -hmm. they, they felt so discouraged. And often it's, it's happens when they're, you know, fairly young or something. But um, I just think, the the power of words and that is it's not to be messed around with because like we might not think it oh we might think it's just a joke or ha 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 
but it actually makes a big difference to people. My grandma yeah, was one of those people that I think would have pursued art further, but her brother said, you know, she, she he didn't think she was that good at it. And, you know, like you're not, mm-hmm. you're, you're okay kind of thing, but that stopped bad. her from, from doing it. Someone asks, how long is the AU course? And for those who work, would they be able to keep up with the program? Well, yeah, it's, it's not, it, it really is like a go at your own pace thing because even the live events, you can rewatch anytime you have time and you're not required to do anything. Like we're not sitting there, you know, holding you at gunpoint saying, do the homework, you know? Um, but uh, yeah, so everything is self-paced. You have a library of courses that you can access whenever you want. So um at your own pace you know if if you don't have time to do you know three hours a day or even three hours a week then that's totally fine you know if you can get an hour in then that's great too right some progress is better than no progress um right some some points in in your life you know maybe you can watch you don't have time to paint i know we had a we had a, a, a situation in our family a while back where there was some illness and All I could do was maybe paint once every two weeks because demands were high. Mm. And if that's what you can do, that's what you can do. You know, (laughs) you gotta, you gotta take the priorities where they are, but then, you know, life will hand you a, another little gem and you get back to painting and it'll be great. Um, but I just, I was remembering my parents were, you know, they still, my mother still thinks, and she's in her 90s, that if you're a real artist, you would never use a reference photo. You work out of your brain. And she has had that attitude since I started painting. And uh, <laughs> and we still have that conversation. And I, I adore oh, really? my mother. I love her dearly. And I'm like, that's okay. She can think that. I don't yeah. care. <laughs> mm, yeah. It's fine. Uh, maybe someday I will just do that. But, <laughs> you know, it's whatever yeah. we need, we can do. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And, uh, uh, just there, yeah. Back, yeah. Just getting back to acrylic university, though, it's just all self paced. So, whatever life hands you, whatever your family hands you, whatever happens around you you can just tune right in again and jump right back in again and get started again um it's all great and my goal for this spring is to go through every one of jed's modules and do them you know i've watched them i haven't done so i'm gonna go do them oh nice that's your goal that's my goal i was thinking the same thing i want to just crawl inside your paintings for a minute and, and tinker around with them and find out how they work. So <laughs> Sounds fun. Yeah. Doesn't it? It's, yeah. Um, I think what, what you'll probably find with my paintings is that I don't know how they work. Sometimes, sometimes <laughs> they work and sometimes they don't. And sometimes it's just a mystery, you know, like I, I, right. I really think art is so interesting because, um, like there's there's man there is something off on this i'm gonna fix something here just a second i've got to figure out what it is i think it's right here but i think that um painting there's there's stuff that you can learn there's stuff that you can put in practice that that you know but then there's there's almost like this there's a there's an element that why does one painting work better than another painting, right? And and you you can look at it, you can think about it, and sometimes I can't put my finger on it. Like I I don't know why this painting seems to work so much better than this other painting because I felt like I tried to do the exact same type of approach, right? Like you know that kind of idea, and I think it's interesting that way because. Um, I don't know, like, it just feels sometimes like a painting, paintings have their own, um, it was almost like it's, I don't know how to describe it. Do you know what I'm talking about though, Diana? Like, I do. yeah, they have a life of their own. They just, uh, and, and there's no copying that there, you, yeah, you, you can never, 
you could never reproduce that yourself. And so exactly. yeah, the, the energy that's in you and the mindset that's in you often overrides all the other things, you know, that yeah. the joy or the sadness that's in you. I mean, all those things come out. Um, and you, it's sort of like you can't not paint yourself. Your every painting is a little self-portrait in some way. Um, yeah. Uh, and not to say if you're a beginner and your paintings are up to snuff, that's not you. It's just a little tiny piece of where you are. Kilroy was here, kind of, a, you know, a little signpost along the way. Yeah. But um, what you choose, the colors you choose, the brush mark you choose, it's all a little bit about who you are right now in the moment and can't be duplicated, mm -hmm. no matter how hard you try. Uh, well, yeah. It's uh, that's I think why when somebody asks you, can you paint that for me again? It's a hard <laughs> thing for an artist to say because no, really I can't really. Do. I'm sorry. Yeah. <laughs> kind of like that was a one of a kind thing, and I can try to do something that'd be similar, but you just have to know that it's not going to be that painting because that was its own thing. In fact, I was just looking at a book uh, by an artist, uh, and he had three paintings from the same location the almost the exact same scene but done over the course of 20 years and they were so different because his who he was in his art journey and everything was so so interestingly like diverse and different so um guys we're going to give away this final grand prize and i'm i'm going to switch my view because i'm going to work on this a little bit more after but uh Margaret, family, this is for you guys. Excited to be able to give this to you guys later, but uh, we'll, I'll be done with it for right now for this um, masterclass celebration. And we'll switch back here. Who is ready for the $500 giveaway? And then right after this, guys, stick around. Don't leave because Peter's going to share his video and uh, we'll, we'll, we'll wrap up right after that. But here our we go. video, our video. Okay, let's see who's gonna walk away with a five hundred dollar gift card. The nervousness. <laughs> <laughs> We're so close. It landed on. Oh yeah, Pamela. 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 <laughs> Congratulations. Uh, so, so happy for you and, uh, make sure you just write us a email and we'll get this over to you. So anyways, you guys, congratulations. If you want a prize, make sure you email and Peter, I'm excited. I haven't watched this guys. I don't think anybody besides Peter has and seen John this L. and John L. Okay. John, yep. Peter's <laughs> wife has seen it, but yep. none of us. So we're excited. Thanks, Peter, for doing this. Yep. So we're going to probably end the stream right at the end as well. So um, if there's anything you guys want to add, then. Okay. Um, we'll say bye right now then. Bye, yeah. you guys. We love we you. Love we believe me. in you. And we'll we'll just <laughs> say bye now and we'll close it out with this video. Sounds great. Love you guys. Thrilled. Thanks Every time here. I go into the Facebook community. The arts are not a way to make a living. They are a very human way of making life more bearable. Practicing an art, no matter how well or badly, is a way to make your soul grow for heaven's sake. Sing in the shower, dance to the radio, tell stories, write a poem to a friend, even a lousy poem. Do it as well as you possibly can. You will get an enormous reward. You will have created something. All right, so it is uh, Monday, the day of the first masterclass session, and I, I'm so stoked. We've got almost 6,000 people in the Facebook group, and I just can't believe the amount of incredible work and discussion and encouragement that's been going on here. I am so, so excited. I just wanna to say to everybody who is here that we are thrilled. Every time I go into the Facebook community, I see courage, I see boldness, I see people 
already overcoming fear and insecurity and things and it just makes me so proud i see people who have who are all over the world who've come here and i see people who've journeyed through hard things to be here and i'm just excited thrilled that you're with us and i hope that this is a memorable time for you we want it to be the best and we're glad that you're here so thanks the acrylic university team welcomes you to this masterclass, and we are striving tirelessly behind the scenes to make this an event that you will not forget happy painting welcome 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 everybody we are so glad that you are here we are so thrilled 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 to be able to uh, welcome you into this master class that is starting right now then i'm here with my good friend mr peter stout peter are you with me i sure am good morning or afternoon or late night wherever you're coming in from uh it's so so great to be with you all so this is the big idea from today is brushwork is a choice and it's a combination of intention and effort that will get you to boldness. It doesn't happen if you're practicing the wrong things. So what you're gonna get out of today is three guaranteed methods to create paintings that are characterized by bold and courageous brush marks. And just like that, the Radiant Acrylic Masterclass was off to the races. During session one, Jed taught you all how to paint with courage and boldness. And he shared some of his own personal painting insecurities to show you that it's okay to be scared and uncertain. The only thing that matters is that you do it anyway. And you all took that idea and ran with it for session one's homework. Okay, great. Yeah. That's important. Um, totally. But I just wanted to share a little mini miracle because it'll maybe make everyone feel like okay. that's helping here. Uh, last week and the week before, I was trying to record my class and, and demo and failing and failing and failing. And I sounded like a cold robot. I mean, I just could oh. not make myself sound great mm -hmm. i mean it just I, I would look at it and go no one would want to watch this she just sounds like she's reading badly a terrible script and then um <clears throat> i had a dream and i just uh, in my dream you know i prayed about it because i was like how <laughs> please help me i i don't know how to make myself not sound like a robot mm -hmm. and i had this dream where there's community of people were just surrounding me with love and oh, it was no. like their love hmm inside of me and i had it was so visceral i woke up and i went oh oh mm. that's so good and then i i woke up and it the feeling stayed and i mm -hmm. record just talking to those people who had surrounded me with that love in my dream and it, it made all the difference in the world and Aww. i was able to record it in like one take and able to do my demo and really feel like i was talking to those people who had sent me that love that's yeah, awesome was, diana yeah, tears are because it was such a powerful moment for me Aww. um and if i hadn't erased them i'd send you some of the bad ones because they were so bad <laughs> <laughs> At the start of session two, we asked you what you learned from the first lesson and got to hear all of your unique and individual takeaways from that first masterclass session. today and i want to ask you this question what holds you back from being free in your color choices kandinsky says that color can provide a psychic vibration Color hides a power still unknown but real, which acts on every part of the human body.
Throughout the week, an incredible community blossomed inside of the Facebook group. Time and time again, insecurities were met with overwhelming love and encouragement. We got to see three wonderful ladies taking the class from their retirement home and it just blew our minds that there are people out there watching Acrylic University on a TV together. We just felt so proud. While a lot of incredible things did happen this week, we also want to acknowledge that a lot of you came to the class going through some really, really hard things. And we just want to acknowledge that that's okay. That's part of being human. That's the reality of being human. You are welcome here. And we sincerely hope that we were able to bring some sort of joy into the difficult situations that many of you were going through. At the start of session three, we asked you all what you wanted people to feel when they looked at your paintings. Thinking about your overall art, what do you want people to feel in your art? And seeing them all made me want to tell you that no matter what your final result may look like, your paintings are a deeply valid and beautiful form of self-expression. And we're so grateful that you shared that all with us this week. What I'm gonna show you right now is something that I just kind of stumbled across in my own experimentation. And I don't know if, I don't think I'd ever seen anybody do it before. I'm an old guy, so I go back to Chariots of Fire. I don't know if you guys <laughs> remember that, but but Eric Liddell, the main character, he said, when I run, I feel God's pleasure. And now when I paint, I feel God's pleasure. It's, so that makes it special beyond just the physical, tangible painting of it. It, it's, it goes beyond that for me. Like these were real artists, you know, in this group. And they were saying like nice things about my uh -huh. work and they weren't telling me like my work needed help or my work is yeah. terrible or the instructor was saying things like we love you we believe in <laughs> you that has such an impact mm -hmm. on someone who has been telling themselves the exact opposite for such a long time we welcomed many new members to acrylic university and we'll probably welcome many more before the night is over but with that being said, whether you joined or not, we hope that this class was a blessing to you and helped encourage you and bring some hope into your life. From everyone at the Acrylic University team, you are loved and believed in, 
and happy painting.